The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. There we go. I had to unmute myself. Uh, hello, everybody. This is uh, JB Coopy, and I want to welcome everybody today to our webinar, Unstructured Data, and how to make it actionable via supply chain control tower. And um, we've got a lot of people uh, on the attendee list today, um, so we're going to go through about an hour-long presentation today. Um, we're going to uh, show a bunch of demos. We're actually going to show how to work with information in a fully unstructured format inside of Excel, just kind of from the beginning. Uh, and then we'll also show it working in the context of a process. And then we'll also show you within a supply chain control tower how the same type of information for a consumer products company can be used and shared across, you know, many different types of applications. So let me start first by, you know, talking a little bit, oh, and I should have said, if at any time um, you have questions, please feel free to put the questions into the question panel um, that's provided as part of the GoToWebinar capability. Um, we may not be able to get to all your questions today. Um, if we do not, um, we will certainly send an answer back to you. Um, so, you know, feel free to use that. Um, and or you can simply email us at info at boardwalktech.com as well. Um, but let's first talk about, you know, Boardwalk Tech. Um, we've been building these enterprise information management systems for 15 years with companies such as Apple, Levi's, Vineyard Vines, Coke, Mars, I mean, many companies that you recognize across different aspects of industry, consumer products, also work in financial services, work in government. And what we're focused on is being a technology center of excellence in what, what's called digital ledger technology. And this is not to be confused with distributed ledger technology, which is what's blockchain all about, but digital ledger technology. And this is specifically the technology that, for example, Amazon came out with two years ago, although we came out with it 15 years ago and have a patent on our digital ledger. But they came out with it and said, hey, you know, the problem with SAP and with Oracle and all those other enterprise systems that are built on traditional relational databases is you can't tell what's changed. I mean, go into your SAP system and say, click on a cell and how easy, or click on one of the data elements and say, how easy is it to be able to understand who changed what and why? And so what we're doing with our digital ledger technology is we're focused on making documents and data actionable using a new patented data method to organize and manage data. So what do I mean by that? And what, how does that work? <clears throat> well, the reason we're doing this is because if you look at multi-party supply chain exchanges, and this is where we see you know, the most of the, the action in the, in the marketplace is all of you, with the exception of maybe some forms of government, rely on an extended start, uh, extended set of partners in your um, value chain. So you've got customers, you have retailers, you have suppliers, you have distributors, you have wholesalers. And all this information is being sent back and forth between all these different organizations where, and, and, and typically what happens is the information is misaligned, it's locked up in these um, transactional systems, uh, there's no audit trail, the data is untrusted, there's no visibility, everyone becomes reactive. And, and so what most companies say is that, you know, 50% of them are saying that they, they need major changes to be able to make this information be actionable in the enterprise. And in fact, 10% of, 10 of them said they need just a complete overhaul. And I think you're, you're seeing this in the way that, you know, somebody like an Amazon comes in and changes the way things are being brought to market. But they've done it just from a, a selling perspective. But having that same type of capability to re-engineer your business to get better alignment across information and then to be able to work with unstructured data, it requires, quite frankly, a new technology. And from our perspective, the question is, does your data help you grow or is it really holding you back? And, and I think most companies, especially when you, you know, look at the thing in the bottom there that says two-thirds of companies consider Excel a supply chain system. Well, why is that? Well, that's because it's very difficult to build out a traditional database environment that lets you run the business the way you run it. Um, and instead, somebody, they come in and say, hey, here's the demo for forecasting from SAP. And then you have to change your business to the way that SAP does it. And that has never really worked for companies, and that's why so many of them use Excel. And then if you take this one step further and say, well, what do I do with unstructured data? Because 80% of the organizational data is locked up in unstructured form, including Excel. So locked up in PDFs, in um, XML files, in emails, in information on blog posts, 
in websites of companies and your customers. And this, this data is really not accessible to the business. And very importantly also that the, the history of this information between structured and unstructured data is lost. Because if you look at your transactional information and you say, for example, that there has been you know, a drop in um, revenue for a particular customer, well, there may be some market news that's in a web post that says this customer had to close you know, 50% of their retail stores or something else has happened. And it's difficult to be able to see the correlation of the history or the relationship between these two sets of data in order to see how are they related to each other. And instead, uh, companies go through the process of transforming this data into an environment that it can may be made actionable. And the way that's typically done is by pushing everything to SQL. And I think people have seen the result of that. They've spent a lot of time trying to get things into data warehouses. And then more recently, they've been using data lakes, but the data lakes, you know, quite frankly, are turning into data swamps because people just put things in there, but they really have no way to make it actionable and get accessible to that data. And, and the result is that today's systems have become riddled and dis, with distortion and corruption, maybe not corrupted data, but certainly you got tons of information in a data swamp, but you can't make that actionable for the enterprise. And, and this is, you know, this is a problem because if you think about this multi-party exchange or the multi-party global supply chain, we have this notion of an information ripple. Right? So if you think about the extended value chain going from suppliers to contract manufacturers, logistic, warehouse, channel, last mile, et cetera, as something happens, whether it's a, an, email, a, an Excel file, a document, an EDI, a post of somewhere, and a ripple is created by the supply chain in the form of documents triggered by strategy, planning, execution, and marketing conditions. And this is kind of an important concept because if you think about uh, an email, clearly that's a document. A PDI file or a PDF file is clearly a document. But if you go in and say, hey, run me an inventory report to show me what my inventory is, that's a document because the result of that <clears throat> is a set of information that's a rows and columns that says, hey, here's my current inventory position. So the question is, is how well can your company access and understand these ripples across all of these different points of data and across all of the different data types, including unstructured data. And what happens is the current approach is that it's very expensive because in order to make any of this information actionable, you need to get it to SQL. And if you need to get it to SQL, you go through a tremendous loss of information because you generally, not generally, you have to come up with a data model. And if you have to come up with a data model, then immediately you're limiting the scope of the information you're going to be able to carry because you can't have a data model that accommodates all the different types of information that's coming in from all these different people. And you end up with fixed queries and fixed reports. And your uh, IT group needs to go through this very complicated schema modeling. So this is why you see IT projects that take six months because you're doing something inside of Excel. It's very simple. Hey, I'm sending my emails back and forth. Hey, why can't I make an enterprise system <clears throat> that works as well as the way we communicate using words? Well, the reason is, <clears throat> excuse me, they need to go through this very extensive schema modeling system where they're taking information. They have to do an ETL, which is extract, transform, and load it. Then they have to cleanse it. Then they have to build the model, and then they have to set it up as part of an application. Well, this is a very expensive cost of transformation that takes a very long time. You end up losing information, typically only 20% of the information is actually being captured. So as a result, you have a very small coverage of data and events. So going back to my previous example of, hey, the revenue has declined for one of my customers, why is that? If you're able to correlate that against news information that says something's changed in their business, then you can make action or you can decide and, and do actions quicker in order to affect the outcomes. And today, companies are left manually doing this process. So if you think about this, you know, something happens and they have to manually find that. So there's an email or you're, you're signing up. I mean, the classic thing is you go to a website and you follow them or you sign up on their email to say, hey, anytime you send something out, send it to me. But then you have to, you know, visually correlate that across all these different documents in order to establish the timeline. Well, when did this email come in? Well, when did they do that announcement? But when was that PDF released? You know, it's really hard to be able to do that manually. And then 
then from there, you got to go into all these different systems to say, well, what's the impact of that? Hmm, what, what was the difference between last month's sales and this month's sales? Um, and once I understand that, then I have to do a collaboration between all of us internally to say, hey, now that we know this, what are we supposed to do about it? And then set up a manual system in order to be able to monitor this as things change. Well, this this is a very difficult thing because there's no data model that works. You end up having no trust in the data and there's not a single version of the truth. And there's no way to derive insights or perform analytics. I mean, when you guys see all this stuff in the market about this magic system that's gonna make all these decisions for you and say, oh, order 12 more because I just saw that the customer um, had, um, you know, more uh, orders come in on their side. Somebody's done a ton of coding to make that happen. And it's a very rigid data environment. And for those of you that embarked on that, I think you know what I mean. And generally what happens is that they have all this data, but they really can't make it actionable. So they have to narrow it down to something very, very small and say, hey, I want to tie all these pieces together. And we see that that's just not going to work. And in fact, it's really detrimental to the business because, you know, not only do you not have all the things on the bottom, but 40% of everyone's time is just completely lost because you're, you have no mechanism to work with this unstructured data in the enterprise. So it's all being done manually. And what we think is companies need a capability to what we call amplify useful ripples and suppress disruptive ripples, right? Because this is, you know, part of the game is, how easy is it for you to be able to detect something or to, or to detect any kind of a ripple that comes in and then go through as quickly as possible to the impact analysis to say what is the variance or 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 is this um, information that i just found correlated to the reduction in revenue that i'm seeing for this particular customer and then if so let me go through the collaboration process with the people that i'm working with today as my ongoing process in order to figure out what we should do next and then let's monitor this information as it goes over time, which is this is kind of the standard BI. But then also, I'd like to be able to see, hey, if this happens like five or six times, I should be able to predict the risk associated with this ongoing business so that I'm not surprised when something happens again. So what Boardwalk does is we, we've, we've recognized that enterprise information systems of old really do not work the way business people do. Uh, we believe technology does not run the business, people do. I mean, simple as that. So what we've done is we've designed technology that adjusts to the way that we pe that people work or need to work in today's ever-changing world. Because, you know, quite frankly, saying everything's going to be run in SAP just doesn't work. We talked to customer after customer after customer, and you saw that in that previous slide that, you know, 80% of people think Excel is a supply chain system. You got to have a data environment that works as, as easily as, you know, sending emails back and forth or as easily as, hey, I want to put something together in Excel um, that's a, a business process and I need to be able to scale that and make it actionable. So by our focus, we think that we just happen to help our customers thrive instead of just survive. So our unique approach is kind of in, in three different main areas. One is, and this is what we came up with 15 years ago when we started the company, is a new class of a database which is the collaborative digital ledger technology. And I brought up the blockchain because up until three years ago, nobody knew what a digital ledger was. And as I said earlier, don't be confused between distributed ledger, which is what you do in blockchain, which is where you wanna take information and distribute it to all the users. That really doesn't work in supply chain. That works great for Bitcoin, where you only got three data elements and then there's no collaboration and no WIP. But in the context of the supply chain, there's a tremendous amount of collaboration and there's a tremendous amount of whip. So the digital ledger takes the aspects of blockchain that makes sense for supply chain, which is immutability and an append-only data model. And it focuses on collaborative exchanges between multiple parties that are transparent, immutable, and verifiable. And then we added within the last couple of years this capability of what we call words, not data. And, th and this is really speaks to unstructured data because unstructured data, if you think about it, there's all sorts of information out there in your business. But if you were to come up with the keywords for your business, what would you say? There's maybe 200, 300, you know, 500 keywords. Well, the way that you go find that is you go look, for example, at your email or you look at the way you store documents that come into you in your business. You've got a folder and that says, well, here are my customers. Here's my suppliers. Um, here's my late orders. And you're kind of moving that information around. 
And then inside of that information, there's words like PO, uh, customer number, um, warehouse location. And what we've done with words, not data is we we focus on managing information as words without having to do transformation to SQL inside of the digital ledger database. And this really gives you quite the capability to be able to look at how this information has changed over time. And what we do is we say, your business, your way. You're able to spin data into gold by storing it the way business demands it. And this gives you the ability to join structured and unstructured data and track it over time. And the basis of this technology is the Boardwalk Digital Ledger. And everything is built on this. So we'll just spend a little bit of time talking about what exactly that means. Well, a digital ledger is a patented time transaction chain data management technology. And I've talked about origins of digital ledger. I mean, we were quite pleased when Amazon came out about a year and a half ago and said, hey, we're introducing a digital ledger because things like SAP and um, Oracle and all these other systems are not a time-based data system in terms of their ability to handle information that changes over time. You have to go through a very complicated logging process. If you say, for example, I want to know how has my on-hand on data changed over time. This is not an inherent part of a capability of a relational database system. And it also manages data as a record object, which means all of this information has to be predefined and acted on as a group as opposed to an individual element. So what the digital ledger does is it breaks the data into granular, valuable, or value addressable information elements. So everything is managed at the lowest level of data, and it works with both structured and unstructured data in its native format. So it can be in Excel files, it can be in PDF. And then if you consider in this particular case the example of data inside of Excel, all of this information as it changes over time is managed without having to do anything in terms of database setup or anything else. So that if, as for example, as this changes from 231 to 235 to 2, it tells you who's changed it, when they changed it, then you're able to understand why. And all of it is immutable and verifiable. So you're able to see who's changed what, whether you're working inside of Excel, or whether you're working inside of a browser, and understand how this information has changed over time. And, and why do we think this is important? Well, the biggest one is probably this number one here, is that a relational database, whether it be for structured information, and you know this in the context of your systems because you've got SAP, and SAP has an item master and a store customer master, and then they go in and they build a forecast, and the forecast has a set of columns in there that are very specific that says, you know, uh, customer forecast, uh, adjusted forecast, you know, January, February, March. I mean, it takes a lot of work to put all that together and it's very, very rigid because it is, it's your transactional system. Whereas Boardwalk is a single schema database. So you don't actually have to do any of the work that you see here because the information stored at an element level, it becomes much less expensive to build, it's much faster. Generally something that takes six months with other systems can be done in four to six weeks with us. And then this grid structure mirrors the grid structure mirrors the existing processes, so the you know the data and change management is low. And then branching and merging, and this is really important in the context of multi-party exchanges. I mean, if you think about a, a typical transactional data environment, somebody has to go in there and they look at a report, and then they click on it, and then they have to lock it, and then they can go in and change one thing, and then they say save it. Well, if you're updating 50 things, you're going to you're going to be very frustrated with that. But in the case of a digital ledger, you can work offline, you can work online, and then as changes are made, only the net changes are appended to the digital ledger. And then we've taken this capability of managing data over time, and we said, in the context of words, how can we make this same process work? So the POS data, um, supply chain data, ERP data, this information, as I said before, remember it's got purchase order, it has customer, it has location. Well, this information is managed for unstructured data in what we call words, not data. So this eliminates having to go through and set up a structure <clears throat> that says, I'm going to have a customer table, and I'm going to have an order table, and I'm going to have a location table. And instead it says, hey, let's just take these words and compare them against the catalog and schema. So I have some curation against that data. But then I also want to 
look at unstructured information that's in social media and websites and blog posts and emails and apply that same cataloging and schema system of curation against that and then pay attention to the position of that and then converge this into one data environment so that if I can go in and can say, hey, show me all the purchase orders associated with this particular SKU number. And then based on using those words, you can go in and say, well, I want to look in structured data, I want to look in unstructured data and see how these correlate to each other. And then very importantly, I want to be able to understand how has that data changed over time. So you, you saw that in that previous digital ledger, the Boardwalk Digital Ledger over here, it was saying transaction A, A, B, C, D. Well, how has it changed over time? And for collaboration and for enterprise data in general, this is the most important thing because you don't make your decisions based on static data. You're collaborating between multiple people or you're taking data in from your transactional system and you need to be able to see what was the old value and what was the new value. And a digital ledger does this out of the box. And, you know, let's just give you an example of the, the word networks in a ripple, right? So remember we talked about how ripples go in. Well, what, what, if you get an email and the email says there's a port delay in Oakland, you know, how do you make that actionable against the data that you have in your database record that says, hey, I've got a million dollars worth of product that's caught up inside the port of Oakland for this customer Acme? Well, then you can see that this email delay in the port of Oakland has a correlation against the port and Oakland. And then you're able to do things like say, oh, well, if this is going to be a delay here, then is this at risk that this inventory is going to be sitting idle longer than we thought? Well, you can't make any of this actionable if you haven't if you have to take this email information and write some type of converter to put it into a relational database environment and then transform it to another debated database environment so you can compare it against this and then just see those two together and then you have to write more code to say well did this change or, or how has this changed over time and by using words we can say hey show me the uh, delays, for example, or show me information associated with all my ports, or show me the information associated with the port of Oakland. And all of this is able to be what we call rippled across both structured and unstructured data if you're working with the words of information rather than the data itself. And this is a great example of what I was talking about where if you go in and say, for example, I want to find this, this customer order against, or this product against this purchase order, when you say, hey, I want to be able to ripple against this, and you'll, you'll see this in my demo, but this is just a, a static view of it. It's a way to search, organize, <clears throat> and dynamically use structured and unstructured data without having to create a SQL database. So it'll show you where this information is across all of your network participants, and then you can go in and say, well, I want to see how this data in its native format has been brought in over time. So you can see here's a purchase order acknowledgement, here's a shipment notice, here's an ASN, here's a PDF, and the information that's inside of this is made actionable and searchable as words of data. So what do we all, how do we package this up and offer it? Well, we have a suite of supply chain applications. We have the supply chain control tower, which I'll show you today. We also have diamond lane, which is what we call ad hoc collaboration in the fast lane. This is used for being able to support, just like it says, ad hoc collaboration um, inside of Excel between multiple users. Um, and then we also have the network of spaces. The network of spaces is where you take information that says, for example, hey, I've got this information that the Port of Oakland has a delay. So then you want to go back into a collaboration that you're running on a continuous basis and say, hey, that forecast you gave me last month that says, you know, this item's going to be shipped by this date. Is there going to be a change to that given now that we know there's a delay in the Port of Oakland? So all of these are tied together and they're all running on the Boardwalk Digital Ledger as the core platform driving all of this different technology. And it's available to you in many different modes. So the, the application platform itself, the Digital Ledger is a relational data-based application that can be run in the cloud or behind the firewall. So we have customers that are at Amazon, we have customers that are um, at Azure um, or, or Rackspace, one of our parties. And then uh, legacy data, so transactional information from your ERPs, your oracles, any of that can be brought into the digital ledger. And then people can interact with the data inside of Excel, inside of a browser, inside of a mobile device. 
Um, I showed you this now editor before, so it's fully customizable, and you'll actually see a version of this based on <clears throat> what we call the Unity Central platform that's presented out to the customers. But since this data is moving over time, you're able to leverage it not only for collaboration, but also for predictive analytics. Because guess what? As people are making these changes, the ledger is keeping track of this, and it's able to say, oh, well, you know, has this customer opportunity been changed 27 times and it was late four times, as opposed to another customer opportunity has been changed twice and it has not been late? Well, then you can use the machine learning to say, oh, well, I think there's a higher risk factor that this particular item is going to be late um, based on the number of changes that have been done before. And all of this is based on information changing over time and aligning information in from lots of different sources. And this is actually something that we got a cool vendor award from Gartner because this is a very complicated process with traditional systems is <clears throat> saying, how do I come up with the data environment that takes information from Oracle, from SAP, um, from Excel, and put it into one data environment and, and then manage it over time? Well, well this, is a, this is a very difficult thing. In fact, what most people do is they'll take this information as chunks and then they maybe put it into a data warehouse. But then if they put it in a data warehouse, again, it's a reporting data environment only. You have to be able to write code to be able to go in and say, well, the ship dates changed, but what was that change? And how big of a gap was that change such that I sh should assign a risk to it? And it's it's not collaborative as well. So you can't go into this consolidated data environment and have people go in and make updates again. So you have to cycle back to the transactional system. And a digital ledger gives you the ability to align all this data, see the changes and gaps, uh, increase the trust and, and speed the time to the decisions. And this is what I was talking about earlier in terms of, you know, and this is an example from one of our apparel customers where they've got all these different SKUs running across different manufacturers around the world. And they wanted to be able to have an understanding of, hey, is something at risk? I mean, do, what's the confidence that this particular purchase order that's supposed to be here on October 25th is actually going to be here on October 25th? And it can, you can look at the changes across the data to say, you know, how many variations have been done, how many changes have been done to ship dates and things like that in order to provide a risk factor <clears throat> to say, I should be concerned about this. And then likewise, if you say, hey, I want to be able to look across all the data that's in my supply chain network to say, hey, how has something happened in terms of my particular information where I want to be able to look across my contract manufacturers and understand how many units I have in different areas, where are they, what's the risk of transit time? I mean, these are all things that you're able to do by working with unstructured data, running it on a digital ledger in order to understand the changes. And the way we see this from a user perspective for the network of spaces is really the way you work. So if you think of the way you work, you're sitting there at your computer and you have this application tool. So this could be Excel, it could be a browser, it could be your transactional system. Well, there's a knowledge base that's been built up over time that says, you know, how do I associate and understand any of this information? And because, you know, when something comes in and it says, hey, there's a delay in the Port of Oakland, you're like, well, what does that mean? Well, the knowledge base says, well, I actually have assets at the Port of Oakland. And, and this is how much, you know, information, how many companies I work with there. Um, and as this new information comes in, it needs to be managed within these tools. <clears throat> it needs to be able to be collaborated on and exchanged with other sets of information. And then as ch information changes over time, you need to be able to catalog that as well for the purposes of compliance or understanding how the data changes over time. And what we said is that the only way to make this happen, this notion of a network of space, is to manage data at a completely different level than what people are trying to do it today. Because otherwise, everyone's just going to end up continuing to do emails with attachments because when you write an email, you're using the language of business, which is writing words, whereas on other systems, you're being forced into making things into data. And we're not really going to touch on this in today's demo or today's webinar, um, but we have been providing supply chain applications for 15 years across the entire spectrum of the supply chain value chain. So <clears throat> we'll be showing the control tower, but we're doing work in procurement uh, and PO WIP and inventory management, um, cost of services, um, cataloging, invoice reconciliation, a lot of work in trade promotion, um, 
uh, operating plans, compliance. It's kind of astonishing how much work is being done manually in the enterprise or in and around SAP and Oracle. <clears throat> and a digital ledger is a perfect environment to be able to do that. Um, before that slide, I'm going to go ahead and, and we'll do the demos. So as I said, I wanted to you know show a few different demos today. And so I'll go in and I'll start out with um, this channel collaboration. So, you know, this is a pretty typical thing that you may see between, you know, multiple parties where I've got all these different, you know, channel partners that I'm interacting with. And I've got purchase orders and, and some type of classification. Maybe there's some commentary associated with it. Um, you know, other data, there's information that says um, when was it sent to a 3PL um, there can be formulas, there can be all sorts of things that are in here. And then what if I want to be able to share this and make it actionable? <clears throat> well, Diamond Lane's that product I talked about where you can go in and you say, hey, I just want to be able to share information that's inside of, of an Excel workbook. So I'm going to say this is my um, collaboration. My spelling's not very good. <clears throat> and I'm going to say, hey, I want to be able to share this worksheet. So the first thing I do is I log in. So this is now establishing a connection between my desktop and the digital ledger, which as I said, it can be running in the cloud, it can be running behind the firewall. You're seeing a boardwalk log in there, but, but it can be authenticated against single sign-on. <clears throat> and then you'll notice that this is just a menu inside of Excel. So much like you've got all the rest of your menus, you've just got a simple menu in here that says, here, this is the data I want to work with. And then if you want to get started, you just say, hey, I want to be able to share this worksheet. So what it does is it basically finds all of the information on the worksheets. Now, in, you may have four or five worksheets in here. You may not want to share them all. Um, maybe you only want to share one of them, but whichever ones you want to share, you say, hey, commit this to the worksheet. That's all it takes in order to put it into a digital ledger. So now you have established this data as a set of information that can be shared over time and you can track all the changes on it. So I can say, um, um, fixed this, for example, and then I can come in and say, I'm going to change, you know, this date. And you'll see why I'm doing this a little bit later in my demo. But I'm going to say, I'm going to make this be um, the 24th. <clears throat> and I've changed a couple things here. But, you know, as soon as you're doing this inside of the ledger, um, it's understanding things that have changed. So if I say, show me the changes that have not been saved to the ledger, and I click on this, it'll show me, you know, what data values have been updated and what has not been submitted yet. So think about how many times you've, you know, done something, but you haven't really known whether it's been pushed over the ledger or not. So in this case, we tell you this right away. But if you want to share something in terms of submitting it to the ledger, then you simply say submit. And what this does is it looks at the information that's been changed and it creates an update in the database or inside the digital ledger saying, hey, this data value has been changed and it tags it with who did it. And, and I can go in and I can say fix this and then say this is done, for example. <clears throat> and I'll, excuse me, I'll click on this again, just so I've got a couple things in here. And every time I click on submit, you know, rather than doing email or check in, check out, it just takes the information that has been um, changed and it starts creating a record of this. So here I'm saying, you know, show me the activity log. And this says, well, obviously I'm the only user right now, but it's, it shows that I've done a couple different changes, so I can see that. If I go in and actually click on the cell and I say, hey, show me the changes that have been done to this since the beginning. Well, right here, this is where I started. And then since then, there's been these different changes that have been done. So without having to do any logging or anything against this data value, this information at, a, at an element level is being managed inside of the ledger with all of the changes that are captured. And in fact, as people are making changes, so for example, you know, if I go in and I say um, my margin um, should be, you know, some percentage, uh, and I was going to see if I can come up with a quick math here. So the actual shipment quantity um, and then my dates, um, anything that's being changed. So for example, if I say I want to make, I want to say this is going to be plus, you know, this um, times uh, 0 0.10, you know, no, that's a big number. Maybe I should make this be 90. Um, but regardless, as I put this in and I say submit this, you can use formulas, you can put all this data inside the ledger, and it's keeping track of all these changes so that now if I come in and I say, well, show me what's been done and by whom over time, then you can see here 
here are all the changes, and here I changed the formula, right? So it's keeping track of all the changes, whether they added rows, deleted rows, updated cells, changed formulas. And you can set up this notification capability to say, if anybody's changing anything, hey, I want to be able to told that these changes have been done. So all of this information without really having to do anything um, beyond simply continue to work inside of Excel is capturing and managing this information at this lowest level. And now if I want to share this with somebody else, I go through and I say, hey, I'm going to email this one time. And I'm going to say, email this spreadsheet over to another user. And I say, I'm now going to send this to demo. And it just packages up this and sends the, this existing file. Now, this is something you only have to do once. And that just sends over the packet of information to this other user. And if I go in now and I say, okay, well, let's go back to this demo folder. Um, and I can go and see where is my latest. Oh, no, that's my email. That's the wrong one. Where is demo? Um, demo is right here. So here's this one that I just channel collaboration master and I say hey open this up and then here's that same file and if I come in now and I say log in as demo right so this is now instead of JB I say I need to be able to type log in and grab it so now it realizes that hey this is a system or this is a file that's connected to the digital ledger but it's no longer jb it's going to be this other person so it fl it flips the identity and it changes it and now if you look at this show collaborators it's going to say hey there's another person that's working with this and you notice that the owner has the ability to activate or deactivate somebody that's working with it but in this case i'm just saying i'm i'm you know basically demo at boardwalktech.com but then i say um you know, more changes, um, and then maybe I'm going to make this be, you know, 55. Um, maybe I'm going to go ahead and, um, you know, copy this, and I'm going to just insert this as a new row um, and say uh, um, I can make this maybe another product, BW. Um, but I'm just basically doing these changes. And you notice, you know, I, I don't have to, like, click on a cell and then have it open up into another system. I simply do what's called submit and refresh and as I do these changes now it's taken my changes and it pushed them to the ledger so if I now seek go out of here and I go back to where I started so back to this guy and by the way you know you, you also can set up notification because remember I showed you that notification and if I go back up to my email here I can see that here this collaborator has been added so this user demo at boardwalktech.com has been added to the channel collaboration master workbook. So you, you see that. Um, if I go back and I say update this one more time, it maybe takes a couple seconds to go in and run it, but you'll, I'll come back and you'll see it when you see the, the other one. But now that I'm in this the other user mode and I say now I want to refresh, so if I click on refresh, then I, I log in. It remembers who I was before, but now I'm going to be able to see the changes that were done by the demo user. And without having to do, you know, copy paste or anything like that, everything that was changed is immediately evident. So you can see here's a new row, you know, here's a, a data value change from 40 to 55. I mean, all of these changes are here. And again, I have the ability to go in at any time and say, show me the history of this particular cell over time. And you can see now that as we're progressing through time, uh, there's now this other user you know, demo at boardwalktech.com. Let's go back and check my email real quick. And let's see if I got my notification yet about the changes. Oh, it still hasn't shown it to me. <clears throat> well, we'll look again in a minute. Um, and then remember back here, I'm able to go in and I'm able to say, hey, maybe I want to deactivate this user or not have that change. Um, or I can go back and I can say, oh, I want to be able to see everything that's done. And, and for this particular user, <clears throat> you know, show me the changes that have been done as of that time by that user. And then kind of on demand, you can go back and recreate. You can see here's the new row that was added. You know, this was my new row. But everything is immediately available with a complete history. And this is just the core capability of the Boardwalk Digital Ledger is this ability to see all these different changes of information that's come out over time. But this is an ad hoc collaboration, right? There's really nothing in here that is controlling 
this data. And really what you want is you want a system where you can say, hey, I want only you know, Amazon to see their data or Acme to see their data or Best Buy, but I want to see everything consolidated in that system. So that's where the network of spaces comes in. So we're going to move out of Diamond Lane and I'll go back. Oh, and here we go. Here's my email that I was talking about. So this is their changes submitted and channel collaboration by demo. And, and you can, this thing can say um, they changed the data value of this and changed the data value of that. I mean, everything is there in the digital ledger because it knows the old value and the new value. But if I want to go in and say, for example, um, look at information inside of a process, then maybe I come in here and I say, let's take a look at a, a system, an SOE application. So this is the um, sales and operations execution. So this is where you're looking at data within that, you know, zero to 90 day cycle. I'm going to try and get this out of the way so you can, I can collapse that <coughs> and close this one again. Um, and now this is that same collaboration, but it's, you know, it's got more context to it or controls. So for example, I don't want anybody changing my item master information. That needs to be carefully controlled. And I only want it so that different people are able to see only the data they're supposed to see. So you can see here there's all these different companies that are involved in this process, but I can set it up where I can say, hey, here are the different users working on this, but I want the Amazon user only to see their data and not see anything else. Oh, and I also want to be able to have this user called SOE look at the consumer-based business. So without having to do any manual copying and pasting, um, and yet still giving people the ability to work in isolation for the data that they're only supposed to see, then you can use this the Boardwalk Digital Ledger to do this, and you can see, package up this information along with dashboards and everything else and set it up as part of a collaboration. So instead of starting with an Excel workbook and then saying push it out to the digital ledger, instead what you do is you end up providing a, a, a template, and the template just has the information associated with that user and nothing else. So if I, if I go back in here and what they end up doing is they end up with a, a blank workbook. So I'm going to clear this out. So then there's actually no information in here except for these histories that I did in my previous demos, but they just given a blank page like this. And then they say, Hey, I want to download my data. And then the person logs in and I say, Amazon. And then I say, go fetch this data from the digital ledger. So now it's it's a much more controlled data environment. This is your ongoing process where you want to be able to say, hey, what exactly is going on with the information and what's happening? And you'll notice here that this view only has Amazon's data. So it's not like the data is hidden. It literally is only showing you the information associated with Amazon. And if I go in now and I say, I'm going to save this as SOE Amazon, just so I have that file. <clears throat> then this is the only data I'm going to see. And what you want to be able to do is, is understand not only how this is working, you know, inside of something like this, which is inside of Excel, but maybe you want to look at it inside of a browser. So inside of a browser, here's that same data where I'm going in and I'm saying, hey, I, I want to take a look at the information associated with Amazon and how many of the total units are currently active. What's the revenue? What's the average margin? <clears throat> you know, what's the on-time shipments? And you'll see here that this is actually showing me the latest week information, but I can go back in time and say, hey, show me how this data has changed over time. So this is quite different than a data warehouse. A data warehouse is a time that's set up by your system process people. Whereas in this case, you can go back and you can see any change that was done by any user because I did that submit refresh. And this is how you get, you know, very rich information in the context of being able to, um, you know, understand how data has changed over time. So then I can come in here and I can say, you know what, um, I don't really like that, that on time shipment. So um, I'm going to say, you know, let's fix this. And then I'm going to say submit um, and say, these are my changes. <clears throat> and so now I've used a browser to make a change here. And if I go back to the Amazon and I, and I refresh this, then just like we did before, then we see information that comes in that says, hey, there's been you know, a change to this. Show me what the old value is and what the new value is. So now if I want to be able to say, okay, um, how exactly has this information changed? Um, and I'm a little concerned that I logged in as the Amazon person. So this is going to, if I do a submit, let's just test something. 
and say um, change, then if I submit this, it's going to say I changed this somewhere else. Maybe not. We'll see. Um, okay, so it didn't. But I want to be able to understand and make an adjustment to this. And specifically what I want to be able to change is say, hey, this data value here for the update, I'm, I'm saying right now this is um, on time and my dashboard is showing me that I'm at 88.24, but I want to be able to change this and say I need to be able to adjust something else. Um, and if I go and make this adjustment and say that this is now um, going to be moved out a little bit, and instead of um, 920, um, this is going to be 924. So I'm making an adjustment to this and saying, hey, this is going to change um, the data value, and I'm going to say make my updates. <clears throat> and so now this is this collaboration that says, hey, this, this date needs to be changed, and what's the impact of that change? <clears throat> and then if I go back over now to the uh, manager the, for the process, so go back here to SOE manager, much like we had inside of the um, the demo inside of Diamond Lane, when I refresh on this, <clears throat> it brings this information in, and it shows me that the old value and the new value have been modified. And as I, it says here that this was the change value, it shows me what the difference is in the data values. And then if I say, and it shows me over here, <coughs> that date, but now I'm not able to change this other information. Um, I'm only able to change the information that I'm supposed to be able to change. But this same thing is being used to be able to drive, you know, the history of the information. So I can say, hey, I want to be able to understand what's been the impact on the, the the information at kind of a metrics level. And say, if I look at all this information overhand and say, how has this data changed? You know, I can see that the information has been able to shift. So I can see my fill rates are starting to change. I'm seeing my inventories are starting to change. Or I see that if I go in and refresh this, that um, my on-time shipment has been changing. So all of this information is now used as part of a process workflow where you're able to understand how these changes are but now it's it's a process and you're able to say hey i want to be able to get the collaborative updates from the users to say when are my ship dates or and i also want to be able to do things like take in my existing revenue from sap and have that brought in all of that will work um, in exactly the same way um, because the digital ledger is managing this information over time so then the last one I want to show is going in and saying, well, you know, what, what's a control tower look like, you know, in this context? So I'm going to log in as the Amazon channel manager. And now this is what we call Unity Central, where Unity Central is um, saying, hey, I want to be able to um, um, work with all this different information uh, without it having already be in a preconditioned format. So when I was showing you, you know, this, this information is my existing data, and I'm going to go in and make some changes. But what what if I want to be able to, you know, just update an existing forecast or upload an existing forecast? Well, I can say I want to add a forecast to this and say, hey, this is coming from Amazon. It's a document that was created on a certain date, and I want to be able to upload this into the system. Well, what it does is it looks at that information in its native format, whether it's Excel or whether it's inside of a, a PDF document, and it finds the information that's relevant to the rest of the process data and it brings it into this environment so you can now correlate this against the other information. And you may ask, well, you know, how do I understand what data is relevant in the context of the network of words? Well, if I go back out to my uh, top level and I say, take a look at the knowledge base, this is where I'm able to collect all this information that says, what are the different products I'm working on? You know, what are their SKUs? And then how has this information changed over time? You're able to build this knowledge base out of these words. And then uh, this, when you pull something in, provides the correlation across this data so you can start to understand exactly how the information is related. And then, you know, how do you kind of see the relationship? Well, you're able to look at information using our network of words to say, okay, and I talked about this during the presentation, I'd like to be able to see how many SKUs are tied to this particular purchase order within the USA market. And then as you notice, when I say ripple this, 
it shows me all the different purchase orders that are tied to this and what the different percentages of and the costs are associated with the different purchase orders without having to have moved all this over to SQL. Because this is really the, the key is that how do I understand the correlation of this information without having to move everything over to SQL first? Because what we do is we extract the information and we let you do what we call a ripple against this information using the words that you use to describe your business in order to say how many are, are tied to a particular SKU. So this is a general ripple. It's kind of like a search, but it's a correlated search. So you're able to see, you know, how is this information related to each other? And then I can say, well, I'm going to go back um, now to the um, to the control tower and say, well, let's let's look at this in the context of a structured control tower. And then this is where I'm saying, as I go out to my different contract manufacturers or my distributors, you know, where is everything and how is it all tied up? And if I hover over this, I can see that the average manufacturing time is two days at $6 a unit, or maybe if I hire over here, it's $4 at $6 a unit. Um, and then you're able to see how many units are tied up in different areas. Um, and then as you scroll down here, you can see the timeline of this. And this is, you know, where it's really important because not only are you working with this information in this native format, but you're working with it as the data changes over time and you're able to apply maps to it and other things to be able to say, where are these different things? But with other systems, it doesn't understand the time basis of this, nor does it make it easy for you to be able to understand the relationship between the various aspects of this data and all the individual elements inside of it. And what's important for that then is to be able to say, well, you know, let, let's zoom in on purchase orders and let's look at a promise table of across this set of information, you know, how am I doing across all these purchase orders? Because you remember I, I showed you inside of this presentation here, my risk, right? Um, and in this case, what we're doing is we're saying, well, you know, let's kind of make this actionable and say, as we're going through commitment, fulfillment, settlement, um, where should I be concerned about something? And then as I click on this, then it drills down one level more and it says, well, what are the data elements associated with that order? The stage time, the product, the quantity, and what's changing such that I should not be able to have trust in this? Well, you can see that, you know, the order quantities are changing or the staging time made a huge change as we went all the way down to completion or, you know, something else has changed from, you know, auto to manual task. Well, this introdu introduces risk back to the process and then you really don't know how things have changed over time and maybe hey this date needs to be adjusted you need to be able to understand you know why is this date um, is it do I still have confidence that this date is 5-1 so then you kind of go back and say okay well let, let's get back to kind of the CPF var, CPFR view for this particular product and you can look at an inventory heat map um, you can look at it in terms of you know days and months but then guess what you also can drop down into the CPFR view. And this is that same CPFR view that we we're working on inside of Excel that now makes this actionable to go back and say, hey, can you update that date? Because I just saw that there's risk of this information coming in based on this new sales forecast information that I just got. <clears throat> and used in the network of words, you're now able to take information and unstructured sets of data and tie it in and correlate it in with structured process data and have all of it work together. And if you do that, then, you know, what you're bringing to the business is you're really slashing the time and cost to insight. And, and if you don't have this capability, <clears throat> uh, and in this case, we're saying through the work we've done with our clients that you're reducing the time to insight and also the cost, by the way, by 50 to 80% <clears throat> to get to the point where you're able to make this information actionable and available for analytics and machine learning because it's a single schema data store and we don't have to do through that whole transformation and get it to SQL because there's a tremendous amount of work that's done down here just to work with structured data, but that simply does not work for unstructured data. And then we've done this work with a lot of clients across many different parts of supply chain. Um, these are just some, you know, quick names of different people we've worked with, um, but just kind of across the spectrum of different um, areas. But, you know, supply chain's unique in that it's, um, as I said in the beginning, 
the the value chain of all the different people you're working on it you know very very high <clears throat> and then what we found with our customers is that by deploying the digital ledger and by deploying the network words to work with both structured and unstructured data you can reduce cycle times by 75 percent you know increase in reduce inventories <clears throat> excuse me, increase the forecast accuracy, um, reduce safety stock, I mean, everything that is important for the business. And generally what we've seen is that the, the ROI across large enterprise supply chains is, you know, pretty high, 30 to 50%. So, you know, with that's the end of the webinar today. I think we're going to be able to take a few questions because we see it's got a few minutes left, but I want to point this out before we end to say that, for the next 30 days, as a follow-up, we're offering a free analysis of your unstructured data environment and also to build a custom demo for you so you can see exactly how the digital uh, Boardwalk Digital Ledger environment works. Um, so, you know, reach out to info at boardwalktech.com or just reply to your inv invitation. It would be great to work with you and, and show you how this can be used directly. Um, Lavinia, I don't know if you're on and you can hear me. It's always a little bit of a trick, but I see we got a ton of questions and it, and we're probably not going to be able to get through all of them. So feel free to email us or just like I said, you know, type the question in there. But um, why don't we see if we can just take a, a question or two before we close down, Lavinia. Yes, JB. Uh, we have a question. It is, what does single schema mean? Uh, great question and, and a sign that I probably didn't explain that very well when we talked about it, but a single schema means that, and this is part of what we have as a patent in the Boardwalk Digital Ledger, is that we can take any information that and work at it as a grid of data. So if you think of a Excel file, um, there's rows and columns of data inside of Excel. If you think about information coming out of your enterprise system, there's rows and columns of data that says, hey, give me my current orders or give me my sales forecast or give me my current pricing. Well, we can make that information actionable without having to create a schema because a digital ledger works with this information at the element level, assembles it into the data environment and manages that information over time. <clears throat> and then, as I said, we also are using that same single schema design in order to be able to work with unstructured data by converting those into words and not actually convert, not converting into words, using the words that's in the native documents and then operating the data at that level instead of a data level so you can remove the entire transformation to SQL and work with the information directly. And both of those are done in a single schema database, which means you can very quickly make the information actionable without going through, as I said, that six month process of defining a data environment in order to set up something that you actually can start to use. So I think we got time for maybe one more question, Lavinia, and then we'll go ahead and shut it down. Uh, another question is, can I work in another UI besides Excel? You know, another great question. And I, I think you, you know, you saw a lot of the demos today were running inside of Excel, but you also saw me make an update inside of the browser. And the answer is yes. You know, you can run inside of Excel. You can run inside of a, um, a browser. You can run inside of a mobile device. Um, there's also a complete set of um, APIs um, and um, user interface tools so that if you wanted to um, have this built in as part of another application environment that you have, <clears throat> or if um, uh, you want to be able to create something on your own, um, it, the real focus, as I said way in the beginning is, of the company, is on the technology and providing a platform that can be used to support <clears throat> data as it's managed over time, whether it be structured or unstructured without coming to you and saying, hey, here's our solution for uh, channel collaboration, or here's our SNOE tool that we've built our way. I mean, that in and of itself is limiting you because you're like, well, that's great that you spent six months building out a schema and a database for a demo that you think works for you, but that's not the way I run my business because I run my business different than my competitor. I run my business different than somebody in another industry. <clears throat> and we think this is the huge gap that has happened in the, in the industry is that, people are constrained by the data systems and in fact with unstructured data it just becomes impractical to be able to use it um, so the digital ledger gives you the flexibility and you can do it in a user interface that you want so I think with that we'll go ahead and uh, end the demo because we're at the top of the hour we'd like to thank everybody for attending at the demo the webinar we'd like to thank everybody for attending and we'll be following up with you shortly and hope to uh, have an opportunity to talk to you some more about unstructured data and how to make it actionable via a supply chain control tower.
Um, be safe, everybody, and have a, a great day. Thank you.